Thanks for joining us here on World Tech Update. I'm Nick Barber. Yahoo's board has chosen Scott Thompson as the company's new CEO. Thompson is the president of eBay's PayPal and will take the helm on January 9th, replacing Carol Bartz, who was fired in September. At Yahoo, Thompson will face a challenge that his three predecessors weren't able to solve, getting Yahoo to recover its technology leadership in the consumer internet services market and turning around the company's financial performance. Thompson had this to say during a call with the media. I fundamentally believe that Yahoo's future depends on its ability to create great products and integrated, compelling customer experiences. How we do that will be a function of delivering both excellent technology and content, not one or the other. Before we get too far into this week's show, we want to remind you that next week we'll be in Las Vegas for the Consumer Electronics Show. You can be sure to catch World Tech Update from there next Thursday, as well as IDG Daily on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, where we'll take a look at the day ahead. CES isn't what it used to be, though. Many companies launch products on their own schedules. Take, for example, the Kindle Fire, the latest iPhone, or Sony's PlayStation Vita. We do expect to hear some buzz around Ultrabooks, a streamlined, lightweight class of notebooks. Intel CEO Paul Ottolini will likely show off some new devices during his keynote on Tuesday. Microsoft will make its final appearance at the show. For years, the company has had the main pre-show keynote, a tradition that dates back to the days of Bill Gates. We'll likely hear an update on Windows 8, its first OS for both tablets and PCs. Analysts are betting that HTC, Lenovo, and Acer are likely to show Windows 8 and Android tablets based on NVIDIA's Tegra 3 quad-core ARM processors. So a lot to look forward to. Sony and Research in Motion are hoping to entice customers into buying their tablets in the new year. Both are struggling against powerhouse Apple, which holds more than 61% of the tablet market worldwide, according to IDC. Sony's Tablet S device is priced as low as $400. That's $100 cheaper than the device's original pricing. The Tablet S has a 9.4-inch display at 1280 by 800 pixels, a 1 GHz NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor, and front and rear-facing cameras. The BlackBerry Playbook tablet now goes for $300, but even at that price, consumers may not find it as much of a bargain. It has little app support, no personal information manager or email, and it only supports Wi-Fi. Apple will likely host an event later this month focusing on iBooks, an analyst has said. It's being held in New York City rather than on the West Coast. While New York might not be the U.S.'s tech hub, it is the center of publishing for the country. It's expected for Apple to revamp the iBooks app on its iOS devices and offer Mac users the ability to read books on those machines, probably using the iCloud service that currently emphasizes music. Apple already has deals with book and magazine publishers, and analysts say the company will probably use the event to announce some new arrangements. Google has launched a political hub site for U.S. voters to get information, discuss issues, and track candidates' popularity. The Google site enables users to separate information by issue, candidate, and political race. Users also can track a candidate's popularity based on number of Google searches, Google News mentions, and number of YouTube video views. While Google is working on its election site, Facebook, which launched a political page in 2010, isn't being left out of the political game. The social network is gearing up to host a Republican presidential primary debate for Sunday morning. The debate will live stream on Facebook as it's carried on NBC as a special edition of Meet the Press. The Facebook debate will air just days before the highly influential New Hampshire primary. Cisco has discontinued its Yumi personal telepresence system, but has done so very quietly. No formal announcement or press release was ever made, and the product support number no longer takes calls for the video conferencing system. It comes as no surprise, though. Some stores were selling the systems two-for-one before pulling them from the shelves. The system cost several hundred dollars, and users needed to pay for service as well. Are you a huge Apple fan? Do you idolize, I mean, are you obsessed with Steve Jobs? Then this next product might be for you. It's what some are calling an incredibly realistic Steve Jobs doll, and it will go on sale next month. The posable figure from In Icons is outfitted in a customary black turtleneck and blue jeans. 
It will sell for about $100 and also ships with accessories such as a chair and a one more thing backdrop. We've got the question up on our Facebook page, is it creepy or cool? Would you buy one? Log on and let us know. Well, that's our show for this week. Thanks for joining us here on World Tech Update. To find out what's coming up on every week's show, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget, next week we'll be at CES in Las Vegas. As we head out this week, we'll leave you with some Nintendo gaming shots as the 3DS hit the 4 million units sold mark. I'm Nick Barber, and for all of us here at the IDG News Service, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week from Vegas.